This first section we're going to talk about is uh, pages 268 to uh, 271. Uh, so let's go ahead and t take a look. First two pages are talking about living technology, technology that we use uh, that helps take the place of living things or to help us with living things. Uh, so a couple of little uh, captions that are on your pages there. Uh, a bioengineer may design a fish farm to raise large numbers of fish for food or other uses. Uh, believe it or not, most of the fish you guys probably eat uh, in the way of fish sticks or fish patties here at lunch at school. A lot of those are actually raised in uh, fish farms. So that's like a big lake where they grow the fish. Um, it also has a picture there that shows the this plant cleans dirty water to make it safe to drink. So again, most of your drinking water, as gross as it sounds, came from other places, whether it's river water or uh, uh, waste water, uh, whatever. Those types of plants um, clean the water so that it's safe for you, to, you and I to drink, to take showers in, to take baths in, and uh, pretty much to use our daily, uh, daily lives. Uh, going on with the pictures, there's one of a doctor's office there. It says, surgeons today can use computer-assisted machines in delicate operations. So if you really look at that picture, there's a little arm that's kind of dangling there, a uh, mechanical arm, and it can help with uh, certain aspects of surgery. And that last picture, that is an artificial heart. Uh, it says it may not look like a real human heart, but it works in the same way. So uh, there have been a couple, uh, there have been people that have had artificial hearts put into their body to help pump since their heart stopped working. All right, let's go ahead and read it and see what this is all about. Uh, I don't know if you noticed in lesson one, but there was one point where I paused for you to say your uh, vocab word uh, that we've been doing all school year. So, all right. The many branches of science are often connected. Engineered devices are sometimes used on living things. This connects engineering and biology. <laughs> Thus the word bioengineering. Engineers who work with living things are called bioengineers. When bioengineers apply the engineering design process to living things, it's called bioengineering. One important part of bioengineering deals with the environment. Bioengineers design ways to protect our environment. For example, they design tools to prevent and clean up pollution. Any product used to benefit living things or their environment is an example of biotechnology. Bioengineering also deals with health and nutrition. For instance, plants can be engineered to grow faster or larger to feed more people. Food for livestock may be engineered to make the animals healthier. So an example of that would be uh, up in northern Michigan, where we go like to travel for a summer vacation. There is a farm, a cherry tree farm, run by Michigan State University. And what they do is they literally genetically graft uh, plants together and then try to grow a new strain of cherry tree, depending on what you want the cherries to do. Sometimes you want a cherry that has a, uh, a thicker skin so that the uh, cherries don't get bruised during uh, transportation because uh, they actually still transport them in water so they slosh around. Sometimes uh, you want a cherry that's sweeter or a combination of traits of two cherries put together. Um, or maybe you want a cherry tree that it grows the cherries closer to the ground so they're easier to pick. Or uh, now they use shakers to shake the trees. Um, they need uh, cherries that are uh, cherry trees that are going to uh, be durable enough to stand up to the shakers. So this, that's what they do. They bioengineer those so that they're, uh, so they work better for you. Back in the book at the top of uh, 269, bioengineers also design biotechnology that helps find or treat diseases. For example, scanners in, in hospitals can look inside the body, like that CT scan from the last lesson. They let doctors see a diseased or damaged organ. Other devices help surgeons perform operations. Some bioengineers design things that replace human body parts. Artificial legs help people who have lost their own. Artificial skin helps burn victims. Bioengineers have even developed artificial hearts. As amazing as that, that sounds. 
So looking at the uh, little activity there, it says bioengineering and human needs. Uh, it's got an example of four different types of bioengineering, the four that you see on your page. Um, I want you to try to figure out what is the need that's being supplied by these bio uh, techniques or these bioengineering. Um, each one has one. Like why do we have fish farms? Why do we have um, water treatment plants? Why do we have robotic surgery or artificial hearts? Go ahead and fill that out, and when you're done filling it out, come on up to me, find me, and show me what your answers are. I'd like to see them. All right, moving on to page 270 and 271. What is a prosthesis? Uh, go ahead and say that word once just so you can get it down. It's prosthesis. Good job. Some bioengineers design and test devices that improve the human body. These devices mimic human functions to meet people's needs. Now, I want to make this very clear here, guys. This is not, um, these prosthesis are just to take the place of an actual human part. Uh, it doesn't actually, they're not bionic. They don't make them faster, jump higher, fly, or he have better hearing, or have better eyesight. I mean, uh, like glasses and things, uh, would be kind of like a prosthesis uh, because it helps you, it assists your own vision, makes your vision better than it was. So that's what these devices are. They're, they're to take the place of a device in your body that has, uh, doesn't work anymore or that you've lost. So over there on the side it says, glasses and hearing aids are common types of human prostheses. A prosthesis is a biotechnology that replaces or improves a defective body part. A prosthesis may be used to make a sense organ work better. So like a hearing aid or glasses. They make the organ you still have work even better. For example, a pair of glasses or contact lenses can improve vision. See, I should probably read ahead so I know what I'm talking about because I already said that. A prosthesis may also be used as a substitute for a missing body part. An artificial leg or arm can take the place of one loss to injury or illness. Some prostheses are worn on the outside of the body. Others must be placed inside the body by surgeons. So if you look at some of the examples they have here, like a prosthetic hand um, would be taking the place of a hand that was lost in an accident or illness or a, a birth defect of some sort. Uh, a hip replacement is on the inside of the body. Um, it, it actually replaces part of the femur bone uh, that we talked about, the ball and socket joint. And then uh, a cochlear ear implant is an implant inside a person's head for uh, someone that's going deaf or is born with a loss of hearing. Um, and you've probably seen people that have this little circle that's embedded right here on the back of their, their ear, and that's part of the cochlear ear implant. It's actually inside their ear, and it allows them to hear better. It has a little battery usually that hangs around on the outside of their ear like you see in the picture there. And sometimes there's uh, other pieces that go in your heart called uh, a pacemaker that helps your heart beat at a certain pace. Now, functions of prosthesis. I, I, again, I'd like you to do this activity because it's a, it's a good one. Um, try to tell me what the function of each of those things are. Think about what you think they are and, um, and just do it for your own good. Um, check it out. What's, what, what would a heart pacemaker be for? I already told you that. Um, what would the dental bridge work? What would that be for? So think about that. It's, it's like a bridge in your mouth in the dental area. All right. Uh, well, this is all for this uh, day's lesson. So I'll see you again on the, uh, the next day.